In this video, I'll reveal my techniques for enhancing flat vector graphics, specifically for HUD and UI design by adding depth and dimension for a more engaging experience. Hi, my name is Cameron and I'm the creator of Motion Science. Before we get started today, I want to invite you to join my complimentary workshop at motionscience.tv slash workshop where I unveil my personal techniques and hidden gems that I use in my daily workflows. This is a free workshop and takes about 30 minutes. Don't miss out on your chance to level up your skills and make sure to visit motionscience.tv slash workshop after watching this video, you won't regret it. Now to kickstart this project, I need high quality vector graphics. Since I lack artistic skills, I prefer to use pre-existing graphics rather than creating them from scratch. I have a membership to Envato Elements as well as FreePick, which are great resources for finding simple and visually interesting HUD UI shapes and graphics. While there are plenty of free options available on websites like FreePick and others, some of them require crediting the creator. However, I opt for paid membership sites like Envato Elements to save time and have access to a wide variety of assets quickly. This way I can focus on finding the perfect elements for my projects rather than wasting time searching for free assets. Once I have selected the vector graphics that I believe will work well, I import them into Illustrator and I organize them into layers. This allows me to manipulate and adjust each element individually. I then bring the layers into After Effects and convert them into 3D layers. This allows me to add depth and dimension to the graphics. To ensure that the layers remain sharp and clear, even at larger scales, I enable the option to continually rasterize the layers. This maintains the quality of the graphics even when they are scaled. In After Effects, I utilize the Z plane in 3D space to arrange and spread out the layers. This allows me to create a sense of depth and dimension within the composition. It also enables me to create a more dynamic and visually engaging design by adding movement and animation to the graphics in 3D space. By using these techniques, I can take flat vector graphics and turn them into interesting and dynamic visuals with depth. After arranging and spreading out the layers in 3D space, I add a 3D camera to the composition. This allows me to explore different angles and perspectives to find the most visually engaging viewpoint. Once I have identified an angle that I think will work well, I create a keyframe and begin experimenting with simple movements. If you are familiar with my work, you know that I prefer to use one node cameras rather than a two node camera. This allows me to use fewer keyframes when animating my camera. Once I have established the camera motion, I enable depth of field for the camera. This technique creates a more realistic and natural visual by blurring the background and foreground elements. I also increase the aperture of the camera. This increases the amount of depth of field and helps in creating a more immersive and engaging visual experience for the viewer. Overall, these techniques and tools enable me to take a static design and add a sense of movement and depth to make it more visually interesting and engaging. Once I have established the camera motion and depth of field, I like to add an additional layer of visual interest by incorporating fractal noise. I create another 3D solid layer and I apply fractal noise to it. I then adjust the brightness, contrast, and overall size of the fractals to achieve the desired effect. To add movement to the fractals, I animate the evolution by creating a couple of keyframes and adjusting the parameters over time. To integrate the fractals into the scene, I set the animated fractal layer to be a luma mat for the vector layer beneath it. This allows the fractals to reveal the graphics below, creating a sense of depth and movement. By using this technique, the fractals add an additional layer of visual interest and movement to the scene, making it more engaging for the viewer. I make any necessary final adjustments to the camera motion and focus settings to ensure that the composition is visually balanced and the movement is smooth. I pay attention to the details, such as the movement of the camera, the focal length, and the depth of field, to make sure that the final product is polished and visually pleasing to the viewer. This step is crucial in creating a cohesive and engaging visual experience. To enhance the visual appeal of the composition, I add an adjustment layer to the top of the stack and apply two effects. The first effect is Deep Glow, which creates a subtle organic halo around the edges of the graphics, adding depth and dimension. 
The second effect is Noise Alpha, which adds a subtle texture to the piece, creating a more organic and natural feel. To add contrast to the scene, I duplicate the background solid and I drag it to the top of the layer stack. I then set the blending mode to overlay. This darkens the scene and adds more contrast, making the graphics pop and stand out. This helps in creating a more dynamic and visually interesting composition by adding contrast to the piece. Finally, I add a solid layer near the bottom of the layer stack. To this solid layer, I apply the grid effect. I adjust the settings of the grid to achieve a size that complements the other elements in the composition. By adding a grid, I create a sense of structure and organization in the design and also help to establish a clear visual hierarchy. Additionally, to create a sense of depth and movement in the scene, I duplicate some of the assets and I offset them slightly. This creates the illusion of more elements and activity in the scene, making it more dynamic and engaging for the viewer. This technique also helps to add interest to the design by creating a sense of movement and depth. And there you have it, my techniques for enhancing flat vector graphics, specifically for HUD and UI design by adding depth and dimension. I hope this was both informative and entertaining for you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more content just like this. Your support means the world to me and it helps me to continue creating content. I would love to hear your thoughts on the video, so please leave a comment or question below. As always, thank you for watching and I look forward to connecting with you in my next video.